Hallelujah. I heard everything's big in Texas, so I want to hear a big praise. Come on, stand up right now. Especially 
I, I, I guarantee you he felt relieved because whenever you saw the prophet, that always came with bad news. Because the truth hurts. Can I get an amen? amen. But once he said that one of his sons is anointed, ah, he let the air out. So he brought all of his sons, his big strong sons, he brought them all in. And uh, the prophet went through one by one and said, no, it's not him. It's not him. Then he, had to, then he asked this question, do you have another son? Come on, this is the backdrop. And this is what his daddy's answer was. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's another guy out there with the sheep. So not only did David not know that somebody was at his daddy's house, his daddy forgot where he was. <laughs> now there's a whole lot of reasons why, you know, the, the, the many believe why he, he it was like that. But anyways, I'm not, I don't care about that, amen. amen. But see that he brought him in and there was an anointing on him. Amen. And the prophet uh, poured oil over his head. I, mean, I like this bottle right here, amen. <laughs> Ooh, glory. Poured oil over his head and anointed him the next king. Yes. Come on, he anointed him the next king. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. so somebody, you're, 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 that excited you right there, amen, because you've heard of thus saith the Lord. Anybody heard of thus saith the Lord? They lay hands on you and you, you hear, oh, man, thus saith the Lord. This is what you are. And you go, yeah. You're a preacher. Oh, yeah. You're an evangelist. Yeah. You're a pastor. Yeah. And then the next day, you walk, you can walk different. Because now you're the pastor. Now you're the pastor. Now you're the evangelist. Now, now you can't even do your chore anymore because you're the pastor. Did, didn't, you, didn't you hear that prophetic word on my life yesterday, brother? Well, I'm the pastor now. Well, I'm still in the backdrop, amen. So after he got anointed to be the next king, he had to run for his life for 14 years. So he, he, he didn't leave uh, the sheep pen to the, pa to the palace, amen. He went from the sheep pen and he ran for his life, amen. A lot happened in between that, but now here, here's where we are. Now Saul's running after him. Now Saul's, his own king that he submit to, his own king that he served, his own king that he loved with all of his heart is now trying to kill him. So he's running from cave to cave, and you know what? The Bible says that a whole bunch of bad people surrounded himself with David. That's all good, amen. It, it, it feels good to be around a bunch of bad people. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you know that God's doing a good work when you get a bunch of bad people that want to do the right thing. Hallelujah. Amen. So that big old band of misfits that David rolled around with turned into about 600 warriors. Amen. 600 warriors. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, so David came right here in the chapter before the one we're going to read from. He came up and he said, well... I'm tired of running from Saul. Where can I go where Saul won't come after me? Come on. And he came to the decision that he was going to go to the... To yeah, that's what it was. Philistines, hallelujah. Malachi Philistines, I flipped the wrong coin. Hallelujah. <laughs> so he went over there and he made an agreement with the Philistine king. He said, hey, I just want to hide out in your land. Your enemies will be my enemies. We'll fight with you. We'll do whatever it is you want us to do, but just let us stay. And that's what he did. He saw a benefit of, of allowing David and his 600 crazy men. And then, uh, now there, here comes another conflict, and this conflict is going to be with the children of Israel. So David, keeping his word. Come on, can you say keeping your word today? Word. Being a man of his word. Of course, David didn't want to fight against the children of Israel or Judah. David was still out... Uh, having crazy raids and, and all this stuff, and he was sending stuff to Judah, blessing his friends in Judah while he was in the land of the Philistines running for his life. And so now, he, here he comes, uh, he, he shows up on the battlefield with, with his 600 crazy men, warriors, and he talks to the king of the Philistines and says, we're ready to go to war. But all the other guys said, we can't trust that guy because if he changes his mind in the middle of battle, we're surely going to lose this fight. So then uh, they came to the agreement and they said to David, David, just go ahead and take your men on home. Thank you for coming out. I knew you were here to fight, but these guys don't trust you, so I just got to go with my guys right now. Hello? Just go on home, take your men home. We'll keep you informed with how the battle's going, right? And that's where we pick up. 
First Samuel 30, verse 1, it says, Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziklag, that's the city that the Philistine king led him up uh, in camp and, and lived with, with his families. He said, When he came to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the, the south, Ziklag, attacking Ziklag and burning it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there from the small to the great, they did not kill anyone, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was burned, burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voice and wept. You ever cry? Come on. Let me ask you again, I'll ask you after this, until they had no more power to weep. You ever cried that hard? I'll tell you, you know that you're in a battle when you're crying and you can't cry no more. When you're crying and letting it all out and all you got left is, <laughs> because you ain't got no more strength left to cry. Well, that's the position that David was in with his men. They came home after keeping their word. They came home after doing what they knew they had to do, they came home to find out that all their houses were burned, their wives and kids were gone. Some of you came home and found your wife gone, oh, amen, but that was your fault. This wasn't David's fault, amen. David was doing out, he was protecting his family, but he came home. <laughs> and they were all gone, and their houses were burned. It said, now David had two wives, a Hindu woman, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. They'd been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. Come on, not getting stoned with him. Hello. And we're talking about blazing up a fatty, amen. Well, it's medical marijuana, so it's okay now. No, they're talking about stoning him to death. Because all the souls of the people were grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But then the Bible says right here in 6, But David strengthened himself yeah. in the Lord his God. Yeah. Then David said to Ab Abiathar the priest, Amalek's son, Please bring me the ephod here. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. This is what he asked. He said, Shall I pursue this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue. You shall surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. Say, Recover all. Recover all. You see, we all have troubles in our lives. You ever talk about, you ever have any trouble? Where many of us are right where we are today because we have some trouble. Amen. Some of you, it, trouble was the best thing that ever happened to you. Because trouble got you to a place where you give your heart to Jesus. It's unbelievable that you're still clean. It's unbelievable that you're still walking. It's unbelievable that you're still alive. It's unbelievable. That's where we step into the unbelievable. See, there's some times in our lives where it seems like that's all we face is crisis. It's always, we read in the Bible that there's going to be mountaintops and valleys, but it seems like we're more used to the valley than we are the mountaintop. See, but the, mountain, the, the mountaintops are fun, hey, hallelujah. But I'll tell you, the valleys are necessary. The valleys are necessary if we're going to take the land. See, it's an honor and it's a privilege to be able to be here today. My pastor said last night that this is 10 years in the making. Amen. This is 10 years in the making. I'll tell you, 20 years ago, Pastor Edgy and I, we were here. Hallelujah. We came to Texas for, for big conferences and that. And then after that, then, the, then there was a 10-year span. And then 10 years of saying, we're going to come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it was an honor and it was a blessing, amen, when your pastor, Pastor Anthony, reconnected, amen. Yeah. Got a hold of Pastor Edgy and said, hey, we want to get some of that, hallelujah, yeah. amen. Yeah. And it's an honor today that we're here in Texas, praise God. Yeah. And we see, amen, the vision of the that we have, hallelujah, that we're going to take this back. Yes, Texas is the biggest state in the United States, and it's going to take a lot to take it. That's why we need you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we need you. Look at your neighbor and say, we need you. We need you. Amen. We need you. Hallelujah. 
See, but trouble's going to come. Sometimes it seems like we're in that constant state of trouble. But amen. And, and, and even at times we feel like even God's giving a deaf ear to us. We're crying and crying and crying, but we don't get no results out of it. We even have come to that place on our pillows, amen, where we're, <laughs> because we ain't got no crying left at all. And, and you see, David knew, David, David was feeling that way that day. See, David understood what adversity is. Come on, you know what adversity is? It means that you have an enemy, and that enemy's coming after you. Hello. Hey, we can all have an enemy, but if the enemy ain't chasing you, it's all good. You just, you know, you have an enemy. But when the enemy starts coming after you and pressuring you and coming and attacking you, then now you're in a different seat. Now you've got to learn how to fight. Now you've got to learn how to fight. Amen. So some say, I'm not violent. I don't believe in violence. But let me tell you, you're never going to learn how to win until you learn how to fight. You're never going to have a victory until you get into the, to the ring. Amen. You can never experience the thrill of victory unless you get on that field and play. Hallelujah. You know, uh, being a spectator, it's exciting to see somebody else win. But how much more is it exciting when you're out there and you're winning this thing? Hallelujah. You're winning it. See, David, he knew what winning was, but David also knew what trouble was. He was running from the man that he served. He was running. He was living his life out in the wilderness. He was living his life with his wives and his kids out in the wilderness. Amen. Sometimes we feel like we're in the wilderness. Amen. You got more roaches in your house than you do anything else at all. Anybody ever live like that? Come on, flip the light on and you go, whoa, that's a record number. Come on, you got mouse traps all over your house. Come on, it feels like the wilderness. It feels like the wilderness. I remember living in the desert, hallelujah, we have these things called kangaroo rats. And they lived in our house. And they didn't mind sleeping with us, amen. They didn't mind. They liked living in our house. They did, amen. The dolphin that lived in the house before, his lady would be right there cooking eggs and her baby's on the floor and she's just throwing crumbs to the rats. The rats are playing with the baby. Oh, man. Homie, don't play that, man. I come from the city. I ain't, there ain't no rats gonna come into my kitchen, so I, I sat there with the BB gun and I started sniping them. One by one, I was sniping them. But there was too many. It seemed they kept on multiplying the more I took out. Amen. So I was like, oh, so I got my kids. Hallelujah. Glory. So then I, the Lord gave me a vision. Amen. Now, the Lord didn't give me a vision. One of my friends got kicked out of his house. Amen. He said, I got a cat that I ain't got no need for. You want him? I said, I'll take the cat. That went with my rat problem. Hallelujah. So, but David's living in the wilderness. Now David's even living with the enemy. Come on now. And now his own men want to stone him. These very men that had, had sworn allegiance to him. Come on, Pastor. And said, we understand and we know that you'll be the king. We're going to follow you through the wilderness to, to get you where you're going. We're going to serve you. We're going to be with you. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah. Anybody ever said that? I'm with you, Pastor. No matter who leaves, Pastor, I'm with you. Uh, hell or high water, Pastor, I'm there. I'm not going anywhere. Come on, somebody said that, amen. And, I, and I'll tell you, you, you meant it. And you're honest with all your heart, your love, sincerity, loyalty. All that stuff is true. But I'll tell you, when the devil shows up to your door and adversity starts to hit you and hit you hard, amen, now, now that's when the real you is going to stand up. Hello. And, and, and so if we don't develop a prayer life now, if you don't develop a life in the Word now, if you don't develop it in the time of peace, amen, I'll tell you, you don't even know what you're going to go through when you hit a time of war. You don't know what you're going to go through. You say, well, I've been through trials and I stayed faithful. I'm not talking about you couldn't find your shoes or your car keys, amen. I'm talking about these trials that don't leave. These ones that show up at your door and don't go nowhere, amen. Those are the ones that we have to learn to get through. Those are the ones that we better have been prepared, prepared for beforehand, amen. Because when they show up, hello, it, it, you ain't going to make it if you haven't prepared before. So I want to tell you right now, if you're in a land of peace, learn how to pray. Learn how to pray. 
let me tell you another thing you gotta learn. You gotta, and this is not even learnable. This is just deciding. You gotta decide that no matter what, you're not gonna quit. Because until you come to that place in your life where you've decided. 100% that no matter what happens, you're not going to quit. There's a chance that you may fall in the middle of the battle. Because I'll tell you, we're living in a land today, amen, where, where, where people are in and out of the church more than they go to Starbucks. You go to Starbucks a lot, I know I do, amen. I drink a lot of coffee, boy. <laughs> Oh, come on now, how many of you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You spend your lifetime preparing for your wedding, but you never prepare for a, a marriage. Oh. Come on now. All oh, that time, effort, and energy to get married, amen. And after three weeks, you're already calling, trying to say you're calling quits. That's what that's it. I'm leaving now. I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm leaving. Come on now. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Is there something that 21 years ago my wife and I decided and came to the understanding, amen, that no matter what the hell hits us, man, we're not going to spread or separate. Come on. I, I, I said it on I said that to the yeah. Amen. Because we knew back then, hallelujah, that there was going to be a lot of things that would hit us over our lifetime. We had eight kids, amen, and, and, and everybody always wondered if we had a TV, and we did, amen. <laughs> they asked, you have a TV? You have so many kids. I said, yeah, we got a TV in every room, but I really love my wife. <laughs> Just because you don't. Uh -oh. Amen. See, so David learned how to deal with despair. He learned, amen, how to get himself encouraged. See, we got to learn how when there ain't nobody there to pick up the phone, when the pastor ain't there to pick up the phone, when the director ain't there to pray for you, when sister so-and-so, your, your lifeline ain't there and, and they're gone and they're out of town, amen. We got to know how to get ourselves encouraged before God. We got to know how to get ourselves stirred back up, hallelujah. When we, when we, when we start to faint and get weary, we got to know how to get our, our, our energy back. We know how to get our, our groove back, hallelujah. We got to know. Amen. See, in our lives, we're going to face the enemy. He's going to try to tear us down. He's going to try to steal your passion for God. He's going to try to steal your love for others. Amen. Let me tell you, if there's people coming against you, it's all right. If they're lying about you, it's all right. I love this one. My pastor says, if they're telling the truth about you, it's all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil will steal your desire to worship. You come into the church, amen. Everybody's worshiping. Your people crying and that. And you're just kind of like. <laughs> All that light is crooked. <laughs> the devil wants to steal your desire to worship. The devil wants to steal the joy of the Lord inside your life. Amen. Amen. See, but you gotta be, you gotta know that you know that you're gonna go. Come on. That you're not gonna quit. Yeah. See, we're all gonna go through things. See, David, man, David took his men to keep his word. He was keeping his word to the enemy, amen, because he wanted his family safe. But the whole time, the Bible says in, in two chapters before that, that he would go out on raids and he's, he's out wasting the enemy. All the enemies of Judah and Israel, he's out there taking them down one by one. And then he'd come back and give the report to the Philistine king saying, oh yeah, we went and took some of Judah's land. And, and we went and raided this and that. Well, the whole time he's taking out the enemies. Hello. He didn't stop the mission, amen. Because he knew at the end of it, he was going to be back where he belonged. Sometimes we can't see that. All right, so now, here, here he is now. He's crying. See, David, David, it doesn't say that all the families of the men were gone except David's. His family was gone too. He was crying that his house burned down too. That his wives were gone and his babies were gone. See, sometimes in the middle of battle, amen, you don't see that your pastor hurts too. Uh, when the battle hits the church, amen, I, I, your pastor hurts. Yes. The last person that he needs to, to be turned on is you. Yes. Come, on. Come on. This old man that swore allegiance, they swore they were with him, and they meant it with all their heart. But 
when they hit a trial they never hit before, when they ran into a place that they never been, amen, it's then when their loyalty, amen, got shaken. And I'll tell you, amen, that your loyalty is going to be tested. And then it's going to be tested again. And then right when you think that, man, you've shown yourself and proved yourself loyal, it's going to be tested again by something bigger, harder, and stronger than you ever thought. But it's then and then that you're going to prove, amen, that number one, you're serving God and you ain't ever going to quit. And number two, you're going to serve that man of God that God put inside your life. you got to know it. Hallelujah. See, I know that I know, amen, I have one pastor. Come on. I got one pastor and a servant for 22 years now, amen. And I don't plan on hanging up the towel, hallelujah. I don't plan on it. See, when you look in the scripture, Joshua lost the battle of I. AI, not I. Because he failed to inquire of God. We looked at Israel, they lost the ark of God because they, they stopped seeking God's will. But how many you know nothing's impossible with God? But we got to learn how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Yeah. See, David, he had, he said, bring me the epic. Bring me the, the prayer. That, that was the representation of, of prayer then was the ephod. See, you and I, amen, we don't need an ephod anymore. Hallelujah. We got neology. Hallelujah. That means we get down on our knees and we call upon the name of the Lord. And we begin to pour our hearts out to him. We pour our tears out to him. He learned the strength of God when he was fighting a lion. He said, come on, lion. Let's crack it. I ain't scared of you. Uh, he learned the strength of God in God's abilities when he fought against the bear. Come on, bear. He broke out that, butter, that butterfly knife. <laughs> Let's do this.